Hello there everyone, welcome back to another episode of Drawing All 64 of my original characters. You don't need to watch the previous episodes, but I will link them below in case you do want to watch them. And you know, they add a little more context. Also, if I sound a little funny in this episode, it's because I'm recovering from a cold. So yeah, that's, that's not fun, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the video. Alright, starting off with the Huntress. So for the Huntress, I decided to shake things up a little bit with the art style. I was taking a little inspiration from Alex Vitti's art style. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. I just kind of wanted to make the piece look a little more interesting since the character design is relatively simple. The Huntress is, well, a Huntress, and she is in my main fantasy story I call Zanadia, which I've mentioned in the past episodes, and her species is what I call a Wraith. No one knows where they come from. They have no faces and no real memories of their past. Whoever finds an unclaimed one will be able to control it by placing something that gives off shade on its head. Examples are like a hat or a hood or you know something like that. Once it's under control, it will perform the types of tasks you want it to. Though the rains do seem to have some natural talents, it most likely comes from their past existence. I've never drawn the Huntress in a finished piece. I've only really done sketches and like uh, designing her. So it was nice to do this as that's kind of like half the reason I'm doing this challenge. Um, so she exists as all of the wraiths do in what I'll call the second phase of the main Zenadia story. I'm sorry if this is confusing. Um, it's a little, I think it's a little less confusing if you've like watch the previous videos, but you know. But yeah, I think all of the characters I've drawn previously in this series are from the first phase, so it's nice to introduce this now. Calvin is commander of the Elf Kingdom, like my main character Dane and several others that are in previous videos and that we will be talking about pretty soon. So Calvin is the commander of the 3rd Battalion and is known for his quiet demeanor. He doesn't talk much or really at all and is one of the commanders who stays in the background. And though he's a formidable warrior, he usually ha he has a close-knit group of officers that he uses to uh, take control of his wider uh, battalion. I think his design is really fun as like the shaved head and the pronounced head injury make him stand out against the usually longer haired elves. The art is relatively simple. I put him in some standard training armor and decided to give him the signature weapon of a Beck to Corbin. All right, let's move on to the next. Silas is again, one of the commanders, all of whom are in the first phase and he prefers to stay behind the front lines and focus on tactics and planning. I imagine him with a bit of a nervous stutter and to speak up the most during talks when it comes to strategies and economic issues uh, during the war as well as matters of trade. For the drawing, again, pretty simple. I wanted to have him in a library reading through a book and overall just a scene that feels like you just opened up the door to the library and you just, oh, there he is. Uh, so yeah, I think Silas is pretty fun. I don't have a lot for him and honestly several of the commanders because they're relatively newer OCs. Rashna. Okay, I know that all of these are commanders, but I need to get them done. I promise there's only like two more this episode. Uh, yeah. So Rashna is a loud, confident warrior, and I would say is one of the more jovial of the commanders. Again, like even the last video, I will probably redesign her armor because right now it's just a recolor of Dane's armor. And this one, you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, I, and like I said before, the commanders, uh, a lot of them aren't super developed yet. So I didn't really have like this epic scene that I sometimes get for characters that I know a little more. So yeah, this one was, did turn out pretty simple. I believe I did this the same day as some of the others, as some of the other OCs. So you know, gotta do some simple ones. Uh, as much as I would like to uh, draw all of my OCs and give them all like five hour drawings, um, I also want to draw other things. and. Uh, yeah. 
I wanted to get this out. I, I needed some videos. But yeah, I will end up redesigning hers and many of the other commander's armor sometime. Maybe I'll make a video of that. That could be fun, actually. I'll think about it. All right, so Clayton is also one of the commanders. I know, I'm sorry there are so many, uh, but I really like them, so uh, you can't stop me. So Clayton is probably one of my favorite designs out of the commanders. I just, I really like the eye patch and the darker teal hair. So very fun. I like, I like his colors. And the drawing also doesn't disappoint me. I drew him on a black horse in the rain and in the forest and it's just a really fun atmosphere to draw. And yeah, I like to look at it. I like, I like looking at rain and stuff. So it's pretty. Anyway, on the actual character, Clayton is, like I said, a commander, and he is the commander of the 6th Battalion, and he is one of Danes, who, as I said earlier, is the main character of the first era of Zenadia. Sorry if this is so hard to keep track of, I have way too much time to think about this stuff, uh, but he is one of Dane's better friends. They fought several times together before either of them even became commanders, so yeah, they're, they're uh, for them, they're, they're pretty close, I'd say. Clayton runs a tight ship and is one of the more mysterious and quiet of the commanders. I don't know if mysterious is the right way to describe him. I guess to, like, the other, like, to his men and to the average person, he would come off as mysterious, I guess. All right, Greer. So Greer is the commander of the 4th Battalion and is the man who gave Dane a start in the army after Dane's, um character development. AKA, imagine the most horrifying, terrifying, evil thing you could possibly think of and multiply it by six. So yes. Um, yeah, poor Dane. Uh, but Greer, he's a stern old warrior and is one of the king's most trusted advisors. He treats Dane almost like a son later in the story and encourages him. Though maybe not in as direct a way as some um, more like giving him difficult missions and responsibilities and, you know, just hoping he makes it out. <laughs> uh, I went with a similar vibe for the art as Clayton's, but no rain this time and a lot more fog. What I had in mind was Commander Greer had just gotten done with a skirmish and is still on the lookout for the next opponent. Okay, finally moving on to the next universe. Starting off with my character Scout. Scout is the youngest in the main group and a part of the Masquerade, the organization this time, not the story. Or he is in the story, but you, you get what I mean. Like I said in previous episodes, this story takes place in a world where toxic gases have overrun the earth and now people live in these domes that basically encase cities. The Masquerade is a villain organization vying for control of the Capitol Dome. Scout is, well, their scout, you know, I <laughs> might be a little obvious there, um, but he never gave his real name, so that's just what he was called. And, uh, you know, it stuck, obviously. And yeah, he just kind of follows around the main cast, who I'm sure I, who hopefully I put up a picture of by now, but yeah. But you know, as the youngest, he's kind of causing trouble, but like, not in a silly prank kind of way, more in a, in a moody teenager kind of way, because, well, he, he's a moody teenager, so, you know, that makes sense. His mask is in the shape of a coyote, and he uses a skateboard to get around, and he likes to slip in and out of the base when he can just try and get away, which is what I picture him doing in this drawing that I'm doing right now. All right, so Cody is as well part of the main group in the Masquerade, and I'm starting to realize I probably should have given them a team name. <sighs> oh well, it's a little late for that, I guess. Maybe in the next video I'll come up with something. Actually, I don't know if I'm drawing any of them in the next video. Oh no. Oh well, anyways, he's what I would call the heart of the group. He's the most rational and level-headed of them all, and probably the only one out of them who doesn't have any serious mental issues, now that I think about it. Anyway, he's the strong man of the group and is the only one who joined the masquerade on purpose. The others were either sought after or born into it. It was more of a, they found them, but in this case, Cody found the masquerade. And he did it mostly for his mother, who is struggling. 
but she doesn't know what Cody is actually doing. Just that he has a few interesting friends, I guess you could say. So Cody, despite working with a giant criminal organization, is just, I don't know, really sweet and I love him, so yeah. All right, Haley, my favorite undercover cop. I believe I mentioned her briefly in the first episode when talking about Ace, but she's Ace's partner, I guess you would call it. I don't know, they, they like work together, they're both cops. And Haley's main job, when she's not busting bad guys, she runs a communication and intelligence center that's uh, under, un that's basically undercover as a flower shop. Anyway, she's pretty spunky and ends up getting entangled with the main group of the masqueraders. So I actually des made this design of Haley either the day of or like the day before I actually drew this art. I had an old design, but I've changed her personality so much since then. And I don't know, I just never really was feeling her older design. So yeah, I have this new design and you know, I like it. I think it's fun. I think the art's like, it's fine. It's, well, I don't dislike it, but like, it's not like, oh my gosh, this is really great. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that that's an art piece that I did, you know? I was going for kind of a simpler, just, I candid, I guess you could call it. I don't know, something like that. Uh, anyways, uh, next. Veronica, even though she's not part of the main team, is a part of the Masquerade and also right-hand girl to Dyer, their leader. Even though Jay, the main character who I drew last episode, had his father already with the Masquerade, Veronica has taught him most of what he knows. So I'd say that she has a bit more of an older sister role for him, or had at least. As you can imagine, when Jay tries taking down the masquerade, conflict ensues. And it doesn't help that Veronica isn't exactly the nicest or even that sympathetic, but you know, she's the cold calculating villainess with a penchant for stabby things, so yeah, that's fun. I think the art is pretty fun. I just, I don't know, wanted to, I've been seeing some art of like cars in the rain and I'm like, that looks kind of fun to do, so let me just do that. And yeah, put Veronica in there and we got a drawing. Mission complete. <laughs> thank you all so much for listening to me ramble about my OCs, and also thank you for the support on the previous videos. That's really awesome. And also, I don't believe I said this in my last video, but thank you all so much for over 500 subscribers. If you're interested in more of my art, you can head over to my Instagram, Art by Sci-Fi. And the next video will hopefully be up sometime next week. Bye!